Guys, there are lots of tournaments starting up over the weekends in Japan, but of course, we're only really interested in the bigger ones, right? The smaller ones, the exchanges, they're more for VG top decks on Thursday. So like, so go check that one out for just the more casual tournaments. But the big tournaments, let's take a bit more notice of it because there's stuff happening, right? BRO is soon, basically in just a month, right? You got a one month of practice. There's a good time to like, you know, get serious. Let's take a look at what's going on in Japan because this is basically going to be the format that we will be playing. And we all know the dates, right? So we got premium first and VPREM. And then after that, it's just standard in January. So um, probably not going to see that many premium tournaments because it's Japan, right? But VPREM and standard, we can get ahead of the curve. So first, we got Iwami Zawa VGCS. Uh, we see this Aggravain build pop up yet again, right? We thought it was a meme build at first. Then it's topped a couple of more times. Now it's still showing up in other places as well. So we got, yeah, just the Aggravain build that we've been talking about. The, the core here is pretty much all the same grade threes. Basically, the grade twos, you run like very little grade twos, and it's really up to you. Do you run the Wonder Ezel? Do you run the uh, the Din Drain here? That's up to you. But otherwise, the three, I think we've just been seeing this quite quite a lot, right? Quite a lot. And the very aggressive front centric builds, of course, we've seen stuff that really hasn't taken any heals in or like just, just gone face all the time. But I think Hill Guardians are still too good to pass up. So, yeah, overall, this has shown up again, and I think it's quite. It's quite relevant, right? It's quite relevant. Pretty interesting to see, because uh, we've just been before we saw a lot of the spectral build taking the the forefront, but now oh, this thing popping up. Uh, next, we do have a interesting uh, high, not really a Highlander list, but it's like a Highlander hybrid list, right? We've got a Refure, the new Grade Three from Clan Collection. Most people just went, nah, just play Prism instead, and then Japan's like, nah, just play. Uh, Plon instead, but this guy just went the entirely different route and decided to play you know this with co tiers to kind of get greedy and get some good cards and then it can kind of fish for some other finishes after your like referee raid turns and things like that. So you know get Lupina, which is a great combo turn, or you know just it, just get anything else, right? Any other one one off that you can. Because I think the biggest problem with this deck has been just its hand hasn't been very good when you compare it to something like a Prism deck. Um, and then it's explosive power is not as strong as a plan deck So you're kind of sitting in the middle of like weird worlds But with the couture hopefully you can kind of just get that hand back up and yeah You do like check quite a few times like you reveal like three force markers or they're five So it sounds like you get a lot of cards but remember you still discard one and what like getting four cards into hand is pretty much Just all in a day's work for a lot of other decks in the V premium better so uh, this uh, th This couture build acts an extra wounds that it might not might be lacking I think in Hong Kong we also see in like a prism build also running a half hybrid build with couture So maybe this couture tech is kind of like picking up in standard might be something um, interesting to uh to see right and this came second place overall which is pretty insane um then in third we have an angel feather list and this angel feather list is just pretty much what we've been seeing the whole time they've been cutting out the the max crits just running heals because heal guardians is just that good right and um yeah just pretty much that thing is how many yeah he's got like 12 crits still which is still a respectable amount but the rest of the deck is just Pretty much, well, not really what we've been seeing. I think he's changed some of the cards here, but you know, the Sariel's good, the new grade one from Clan Collection is good, and then your rest of the rest of the core is just there to be, you know, just, just ping, get crits, right? So it's still very strong. And then I think we've got a fourth place here. Fourth place, got a Plon. So just your Plon list that we've been seeing in Japan a lot. And yeah, that's kind of it. I think the, the, the correct play now has been just to add an extra Fina, replacing a Karo, because you, know, you just want that intercept to block those annoying angel feather attacks now this tournament had uh 34 players and the large majority of them of did bring angel feather right they brought seven angel feathers way more than the next one which is just shadow palin which is four uh, likely all the wires and then genesis interesting genesis then gold paladin narakami link joker and bermuda right bermuda and then when we look at the top six they, they cut to top 16 so quite a lot but, you know, the Angel Feathers really converted really well. Seven Angel Feathers joined, six came out. Bermuda also, three Bermudas joined, three came out. And uh, similar to Gold Paladin? How much was Gold? Gold Paladin was three as well. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, some pretty interesting conversion. These top three, these, these top tier decks really, really doing a lot of work. And it kind of shows that the players behind them are probably very, very good as well. 
Now, moving on, we have uh, we have another tournament here, another V standard tournament. Um, what was this one? Let's take a quick look. This is a V standard tournament in Hiroshima, right? And um, how many people? Do, a cap of 32. I think like probably 22 join. You know, still still cover things. But yeah, Yasue came out on top. This one's kind of interesting. Um, from from Jason, right? Jason doing pretty well, right? Yasue just kind of the same thing as before, except you just got healed guardians. It's kind of it. He's running an extra Shiryuki. All right, did work in a format where you could probably expect a lot of angel feathers, right? Um, being able to be this this quick, well not quick, but this aggressive. Can do wonders, and uh, you know, Shiryuki might just save you from getting walloped by a huge, huge uh, um, Hamiel attack, right? So pretty cool. Uh, second place, we do have that Angel Feather deck again showing up here, and it just it's just good solid deck, right? Good solid deck. And then third place didn't reveal his uh, didn't reveal his deck because he's going to the WGP. So yeah, but he's playing Bermuda, so I really wonder what kind of deck he's playing. Um, Likely Plon, but again, we've been seeing some interesting tech, right? We've been seeing that Kutir tech. Maybe it is this secret Kutir tech that you just don't want to show to other players, which is interesting. And then in fourth place, we've got our good old Spectral Duke Dragon taking it home. Again, we've been seeing like lists for this quite a lot of times. Um, seen a lot of it, right? But yeah, just an effective deck. And then lastly, lastly, we do have our good old VG Hurricane CS. I mean, we, I think we've seen this a while back before the uh, the lockdowns, but you know, standard, standard, doing standard things. This is a trios tournament, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you kind of expect like people taking the big three into these trio tournaments. First place team took Orphus, so set this is set three Orphus. Um, just pretty pretty straightforward Orphus list, Orphus list, you know, right? The good grade twos and a couple of the the orders. None of the retire orders, but he's still sticking to that six order account that we've been popping up lately been a very popular uh, count of orders. A uh, second place was actually a lyrical monastery deck, but it wasn't Loro, right? We thought like Loro is set three, probably the best build, but this guy blocked Kalissa, technically nerfed because of just you can't run um, max crits. And yeah, so he's decided to still take Clarissa. Uh, interesting, he's running two of the 30k shields. He's also running, I think this is like just a, is it a 15 or 20k shield? Um, order so just extra shield, but yeah, that's basically the flex slots. And then lastly, he is taking the Bruce. All right, so Bruce still. I think a lot of people are saying Bruce is the strongest deck, and uh, we're just gonna see this, this is kind of your your Bruce deck that we've been seeing quite a lot of. Right, the Regina's and the full dives, so it just don't work. Right, uh, interesting. He's actually taking Edens as well. Only one Derek, three Edens. So that's I think that's kind of like the the switch up here. Right, everyone's been running uh, Leonard's and Derek's. Uh, this guy opted for Edens. Right, so pretty cool. And then second place in the Hurricane VGCS, we do start off with this Bruce deck. And again, he's got the full blast and the 20k shield. He's playing that full concept of like four Leonard, four Derek, so no Edens is the big difference. Um, but he's also not running any Regina's, right? So pretty popular pick, but he's decided not to take it. He opts to take the dogs and uh, the protobulbs, right? So, okay, interesting. A second place is Lyrical, and this is actually just the Loro deck that we've been talking about. You know, Loro is very good, so this seems like a much more uh, meta, meta team so far. And then third place, we do have a Keter Sanctuary, we have Bastion, right? Bastion kind of used to be a top dog. Nowadays, it's everything else kind of caught up. We see that he's decided to take in the Ragrill set. So he's got four sets of Ragrill with two of the Sorceress, um, just to kind of, you know, I think that's been a very popular kind of inclusion to the deck. You take out the Coca Beals to add in more aggression, and you've got like the counter charges to complement the extra drive checks that you get because you know Ragnarok does require counter blast too, but at least this can kind of you know offset that a bit and still let you play like things like out and all that. And then he's also running Dark Strain, which is interesting. A lot of people have been taking this out just opting to run four Refresos and just like more since you're also running like more boosters here with the one, right? But you know, he decided you know it's too much of a good card to pass up, so gotta run this. He's also running fronts. A lot of people have been opting to run draws again, just for the discard effect of uh, Ragrill, you know, get rid of threes and some draws. Works pretty well, right? Works pretty well, but he decides to just go bulky and go fronts. So yeah, this is kind of, kind of rounds up, right? Bruce, Bastion, and Laurel. Kind of, maybe, what you'd expect to be some of the strong decks. Bastion, maybe just like the, the more high rolly deck out of the lot, but it does its job, right? It does its job. So those are kind of the, the, the three bigger tournaments this week. The other tournaments were all kind of, you know, just, just casual exchange tournaments. Um, so nothing too interesting. I think I saw like a 
I could grow video in one of them, but again, you know, more casual tournament. We can kind of review that in VG Top Deck, right? So that's it this week. Uh, let me know if these results are what you expect, right? What you expect and you know, with bro coming up, you know, doing some of the study. It's pretty good, right? Pretty good. All right, see you guys in the next video. Bye.